There have been some remarkable successes when governments, academia, industry and communities have worked together in public-private partnerships, such as dealing with the HIV-AIDS epidemic. But new collaborative ways of working need to be adopted if emerging diseases such as Zika are to be tackled as urgently as they need to be. Well, that's according to my guest today, Dr Nick Jackson, Global Head of Research at Sanofi Pasteur, a world leader in human vaccines. I'm Sarah Lockett. Welcome to the Business Debate. Dr Jackson, Nick, welcome to the London Stock Exchange Studios. Thank you. Now, as I mentioned in the introduction there, you're calling for new collaborative ways of working in the development of urgently needed vaccines. What do you mean by that? Well, look, traditionally vaccine companies will embark on 15, 25 years of work in research and development to get a vaccine in developed countries and then several years after to get a vaccine in developing regions. That's just too long for some serious diseases. And when we look at Ebola, it can be done quicker. The right international, regional partnerships, getting R&D into Africa, allowed vaccines to be tested very, very quickly. So with Zika, it's going to be the same situation required. We need new regional ways of working with the right funding to bring R&D directly to where the outbreaks are occurring. So you're thinking of maybe partnering with um, university public research institutes and what are the advantages of doing that? That's right, these are partnerships with local experts, with universities and institutions and the advantages are significant. If you think about it, when you bring R&D to the front line of a disease, you're going to get access to the right samples, the right cohorts of individuals, and you're going to build long-term relationships with regulators so that all those partnerships are then rooted in the science and public health, and therefore you're going to move much quicker in the regions. And you had a lot of success with this approach when you developed the world's first vaccine for dengue fever. So how did that work better for you? Well, we did, and I should say first that dengue is a disease transmitted by mosquitoes. It is life-threatening, and if you've ever seen an outbreak of dengue, it is a frightening event uh, for the community and the healthcare system. What we did at the very beginning was take R&D to the countries that are dealing with the disease. So, for example, our first clinical studies, right the way through to our last clinical studies, were conducted in Mexico and the Philippines. We went to 10 countries in Central uh, South America and Asia with over 30,000 individuals enrolled. And again, we established long-term relationship with the regulators. So we had all the conditions to take the vaccine directly to where it's needed, first in countries suffering from dengue. And this partnership working, it also helps in the rollout or the administration or the implementation of vaccines. Why is that? Yes, if you have a very effective and safe vaccine, and it sat in a doctor's fridge in a surgery, it's not going to prevent disease. So if you have had regional partnerships for a long period of time, you've connected the experts with the community, with the health agencies, and then nationally they're going to be able to make the right policies for implementation. And we're doing the same now with Zika. We have partnerships in the United States with the Walter Reed Army Institute of Research, with the National Institute of Health, funding from the Department of Human and Health Services and we plan to partner in Brazil with Fia Cruz so that we're taking R&D to ground zero in partnerships in the regions. It sounds like it's completely win-win but what are the barriers to working in this way? They're considerable, they're not insurmountable. Um, intellectual property is, is potentially an issue, the ownership of data, uh, language barriers in certain regions and navigating the political landscape in countries that are, are suffering from certain difficult political situations is problematic. But again, rooting those partnerships in science and in public health can help you get through some of those barriers. And you're also calling for parts of the vaccine development process to be speeded up. But some bits can't be speeded up and some bits can. Where's that line? Yes, we think that you really can speed things up. So traditionally, one example I can give is you start your first clinical study, phase one, you stop. You then start your phase two, you look at the data and you stop, and then you go to your phase three efficacy trial. What one can negotiate with the agencies is to move seamlessly through those trials and adapt the design as you go through. But there are areas you can't accelerate, as you'd expect quality, compliance, and ensuring the safety of the vaccine are areas where you can't accelerate. All right, well, Nick, thank you very much for that. Thank you. 
and join us next time when we'll be discussing the latest innovations in MBA education and also sustainability. Bye-bye for now.